um, chapter 9. And uh, this is a very short uh, chapter. It talks about the challenges of global information systems. So this is the global now of uh, the, the internet. Now, um, the, uh, the challenges are about the multinational corporations must use global information systems. So like uh, Walmart is all over the place. They have in China, Europe, Canada, Japan, South America. Okay. Provide elementary advice for designing a website for an international audience. How do you design the website for an international audience. Cite the cultural, legal, and other challenges implementing international information systems. So the, the culture of the of those countries and also the legal systems is kind of a challenge because they have what is uh, legal here might be illegal in another country, and what is illegal in an, legal in another country might be illegal in the United States. So now um, corporations are all over the world right now. Increasing number of corporations are becoming multinational. So there is a uh, global information system, a system that serves organizations in multiple countries used by uh, multinationals, corporations. Overseas operations must abide by local laws, yet sensitive to local cultures and standards. So we have different, you know, some countries you cannot even um, say anything about the government. So the web and international commerce. So the web has become an important vehicle for business to business and business to consumer commerce. The ratio of non-English speakers to English speakers on the web is growing. The internet opens enormous global opportunities. Chinese market is expected to be the largest in the future. There are, I think, 1.3 billion Chinese right now. The web offers opportunities to increase revenue and save costs. So this is now the non-English non non speaking, and then we have uh, the English speaking countries here. It's quite a um, one-third one third of the world only speaks English. So these are the um, uh, internet users by global region. Asia has a lot. Okay, Europe. And these are the global international, global international, and then uh, North America is. Uh, this is the United States here. Okay. We have, um, this is USA. Now, uh, <clears throat> the web and international commerce, online manuals replace paper documents. You, you see all the, all the manuals right now on the, on the web. Websites and documentation are presented in many languages. Must like Spanish in, in Chinese. Global businesses must be sensitive to local audiences. So accommodate languages other than English. You, you know, that's, uh, you know, like there are Chinese, there are Sp Spanish speaking. Um, it's, it's called globalization. Designing global sites to cater to local needs and preferences. McDonald's has, has examples of this in Chinese, Spanish, and other languages. <clears throat> now, this is the way to do it. Plan the site before you develop it. Okay. A site for international audience requires more planning than a national one. Learn the preferences of other cultures, the law. Translate it properly on other languages. Be egalitarian. Do not let any audience feel that as if they're less important than other audiences. 
avoid cultural imperialism. What is that? It's uh, um, if, if the local language or culture has a word or picture for communications, communicating idea, use it. Do not use those of your own country. Get the local audience a homing experience. So think globally, act locally. What does it mean? Okay, think globally, but act locally. International companies must think globally and act locally. Act locally means being sensitive to the regional customs and language nuances. Control must be decentralized. Strategic planning should be global, but can be followed by a local flavor. Now, what are the challenges? Technological barrier, regulations and tariffs. Tariffs are the taxes that you pay to bring go your goods to another country. Electronic payment mechanisms, different languages and cultures, economic and political considerations, different measurement and notation, legal, legal barriers, and different time zones. Okay, and then uh, what are the technological challenges? Not all countries have adequate information technology infrastructure. Broadband communications are needed to support the graphic reads web pages. Companies can offer two versions of the website to compensate for a slower, slower bandwidth. Okay. So here are other challenges. The language is another technological change. Okay. Uh, the Unicode, of course, um, the Unicode has all the languages in the in the world coded for computer uh, characters. Must coordinate with database and applications. Now, telephone numbers are different from country to country. Okay, like here we have three plus seven. Okay, we have area code. Now, uh, in other countries, they have they have. Uh, they have 09, 01, and things like that. It's kind of very confusing. Now, tariffs, tariffs and regulation. Countries have different import regulations, and tariffs executive may be reluctant because of the hassles of learning the law. So some executive, they don't want to learn anything about other countries anymore. So tariffs and regulations of other countries. Companies must comply with the law of the destination countries. Uh, difference uh, in payment methods. It's payment for online purchases expected. Credit cards are preferred payment method in North America. You know, not all countries have adopted this preference. Some other countries you need to pay cash, like in China. Okay. Language difference. Yeah, I mean the 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 syntax is is different from country to country. In the United States, it's uh, subject, verb, object. In other countries, it's subject, object, and then the verb comes at the end. Cultural differences, the taste, the gestures, preferred colors, treatment of people on certain gender or age, attitudes about work, opinions about ethical issues. Conservative groups in other countries may dislike Americanization of their culture. Web designers must be sensitive to cultural differences. Conflict, conflicting economic, scientific, and security interests. So, so you know, like right, right now, I just I was just watching on TV. Um, North America, uh, North Korea wants to have these missiles that uh, that will hit the United States. <laughs> so we're kind of a hey, oh. Uh, uh, how are we? How are we going to uh, deal with that? Okay, so that's a kind of a problem. Weapons manufacturers have technical drawings of the valuable to both company and security of the country. Okay. So U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Now, uh, the products that are not Class A cannot enter the United States. And then uh, countries trade and secret patents and copyrights is different from country to country. 
some country they they you know they don't have the intellectual property right they just say you know what just copy anything just copy anything you want political challenges information is power okay huh? um even people from the same country uh, you know like um Um, like me, I belong to a country, but I uh, I don't like the political power in that country, so I I will never go to that country, I, I, never in my life. Okay. So some governments limit how the internet is used, like in China, they you know they're very strict when it comes to information, and then uh, global companies must obey local laws. Okay. Now, different standards, as I told you, in the United States, you can only bring, okay, class A, but uh, we have uh, we have the English system here that we use, and um, all over the world, they use the metric system. So we have uh, two kinds of system when it comes to measurements. So different standards also exist in date, time, temperature, and addresses. Okay. So... <laughs> Like, uh, I, I was in Japan, I, I was completely lost on their addresses system. Okay. Companies must adapt to the information systems to changing formal and de facto standards. So we have the uh, European article number, and here we have the universal product code okay, that, that we use for each product that we have in the United States. Okay, UCC is now trying to expand product codes using the global trade item numbers. So we're trying to kind of adapt to everybody. Okay. So legal barriers. Countries have different laws that affect global business in general and e-commerce in particular. Different laws pose challenges to international transfer of data. Free speech in some countries you cannot you cannot criticize your government or you cannot say anything about uh, big people. But here in the United States, uh, you, you can you can talk whatever you want about, you know, about anybody. So privacy law in the United States is very, very, um, we're very, very strict with privacy law. In other countries, they're not. They just want to know everybody's business <laughs> so European Union practices conflicting with US practices personal data collecting organizations must must identify themselves okay subjects may belong to the processing of personal data in the United States we are very very strict when it comes to privacy law okay. American companies are busy collecting buying and selling data for marketing and decision making Discrepancy between the European and American approaches prevents unrestricted flow of information. EU directive is only a framework. So other applicable, other applicable laws, free speech, what can or cannot be displayed online, gambling, auctioning, and sale of alcoholic beverages and drugs. So different time zones, like right now, it's uh, one o'clock here, and it's um, it's next day, 4 10 a.m. in Asia. So I see different time zones, and I'm sure uh, most of you know this because uh, most of you are from Asia. Managers must be aware of incorrect time stamping in different locals. In summary: What did what did we talk about here? Companies conducting web Pages business must accommodate non-English speaking audiences. Companies must tailor to local preferences. Tailor means, uh, you know, make it, make sure that uh, you're using the local preferences like colors or displays. Organizations must be aware of the cultural differences and payment preferences. In the United States, it's always, always done in credit cards. Businesses must be aware of the tariff and legal issues. And then we have linguistic, cultural, economic, and political challenges must be addressed. 
Okay, so laws are different from country to country. And now we have the uh, privacy laws, which is very, uh, in the United States, we, we really um, um, take care of that. But in other countries, everybody knows everybody's business. 